a goblin loudly declared, The chief is dead, as he grabbed the chief's weapon, claiming his new position as the chief. However, another goblin showed up quickly and argued that he should be the chief instead. They started to fight, while the other goblins watched the scene. Suddenly, one goblin remembered that the chief had left some prey behind and suggested they go get it. They were about to leave when another goblin said that the guard for the prey was coming back. Lin Tian, the guard, walked up and the goblins mocked him for looking too human. The goblins decided to follow Lin Tian to make sure he didn't run off with the prey. But then, another goblin interrupted, saying they should wait because some other goblins had already gone to find the prey. Lin Tian heard the goblins and rushed back to where he had left the prey. As he got closer, he saw the prey a young girl crying and saying she was scared of having goblin children. When Lin Tian got there, he found the goblins surrounding her and yelled at them to stop what they were doing. The leader of the goblins told Lin Tian that because the chief was dead, he now claimed ownership of the prey. However, this news was surprising. Lin Tian didn't expect it, but he had to accept the situation. Although it was strange, there was nothing he could do. The goblins launched a fierce attack on Tian, injuring him during their brutal assault. Tian, feeling overwhelmed and desperate, managed to grab a stone knife he had kept hidden. With a quick and determined strike, he killed one of the goblins. The sight of the goblin falling and the glint of the knife in Tian's hand scared the other goblins. They quickly retreated, fleeing the scene and leaving Tian alone with the girl he had been protecting. The girl, very grateful, thanked Tian over and over for saving her once again. She said that Tian was different from the other goblins. Although the others had hurt her and showed no concern for her safety, Tian had always kept her safe and didn't harm her. She noticed his unusual behavior and shared her gratitude for his bravery and kindness. Tian thought that he had once been a human sent to this strange world after being hit by a dump truck in his previous life. His new life as a goblin came with a system that wasn't fully working yet. However, this didn't stop him from protecting the girl. This system only showed some basic stats and info. However, it was enough for Tian to understand more about this world through the girl's explanations. According to what he learned, the world was made by powerful gods and was full of scary monsters. Humans, pushed to the edge, fought hard to make a place for themselves, using their strength and resilience. This world was, indeed, a constant battleground and survival depended on one's ability to fight and adapt. Although it was dangerous, many still sought to thrive, because hope was a powerful motivator. But the risks were high and failure could mean everything. As a goblin, Tian was, unfortunately, the weakest and most pitiable of monsters. His stats were really low exceedingly so when compared to other goblins, making him especially vulnerable and easy to eliminate. Furthermore, he found out that goblins became stronger through mating. However, because there were not many female goblins, they ended up mating with other female creatures. This behavior often led to their constant raiding and plundering. Tian, having human sensibilities, found this practice abhorrent and unacceptable. Observing the troubled expression on Tian's face, the girl approached him with a comforting presence. She understood that he was different from the typical goblin and recognized that he did not want to live among the other goblins. She reassured him that once the knights came to rescue her, she would make sure to tell them about Tian's heroism. The knights were known for their fairness and justice. Thus, she was confident they would appreciate Tian's bravery and would probably offer him a place in their village, allowing him to lead a better life away from the goblins and their ways. Tian realizes that the girl is correct. Although his system is not working, he decides to wait for the humans to come and help them. Once they are safe, he plans to focus on surviving and figuring out how to reactivate his system. When he hears a goblin coming, Tian tells the girl to hide. The goblin shows up, loudly claiming that a human is nearby and wants to mate to gain strength. Tian quickly takes down the goblin with his knife and tells the girl that help seems to be on the way. As they move toward the exit, a man appears and defeats several goblins. Tian is amazed by the man's incredible skills. The girl recognizes the man as Loder and runs to him. However, Loder tries to hit her with his sword. Tian reacts quickly, pushing her out of danger. He wonders why Loder is attacking the girl he is supposed to save, thinking that maybe the cave's darkness caused a misunderstanding. 
Loder accuses the girl, Kilia, of being a disgrace for dodging his attack and says she must be punished for being tainted by goblins and possibly carrying a goblin's offspring. He says it is ridiculous to expect mercy from someone so evil and demands that she ask for forgiveness from the Great Holy Mother. Kelia argues, saying that she wasn't harmed by the goblins and that Tian kept her safe. However, Loder ignores her pleas, accusing her of lying. He insists that she should at least make her story more convincing. Angry, Tian tells Kelia to run toward the exit because he is prepared to face Loder. Just then, a woman comes in and tells Loder to stop. The lady protects Tian inside a magical circle, noticing that he seems different. Kilia kneels in front of her, calling her the Holy Maiden and asking for help. The Holy Maiden helps Kelia stand up and then hands her over to Loder. She then asks if Tian understands her words. Tian figures out that she must be Holy Maiden Ephraya, the person from the temple Kelia talked about. This realization hits him because he sees that she could be his best chance to escape the cave. Tian confirms that he understands her, saying he is not a native monster. However, he was once a human who got transformed because of a bad accident. He offers to explain everything if he can go with them. Loder tells Ephraya that Tian seems to have a higher level of intelligence than normal goblins. Ephraya smiles, saying that goblins are usually simple-minded and don't have the ability for such clear speech and deep thoughts. She thinks about the idea that Tian could be a gift from the Holy Mother. After that, she asks Kelia if Tian really didn't hurt her. Kelia assures her that not only did Tian avoid hurting her, but he also protected her from other goblins and provided food. Convinced, Ephraya agrees to take Tian with them for more evaluation before making a final choice. She asks Chan if he wants to go with them, and he quickly agrees, thankful to find someone who will listen to reason. Seeing no other option and facing death if he stays, he is determined to join them and clear his name. As they get ready to leave, Tian thanks Ephraya, promising to repay her properly. However, in a shocking turn of events, Loder suddenly stabs Kelia with a dagger. With a wicked smile, Ephraya warns Tian that he better keep his promise once they return. A week later, in Bright Town, Ephraya and Loder talk to the townspeople about the terrible effects of the recent goblin raid. Loder explains how the goblins carried out sneaky attacks, which led to the deaths of 30 town residents. This makes the people angry and they want revenge. However, he then tells them that the Holy Order, which represents the temple, has wiped out the goblins and avenged the fallen villagers. Ephraya encourages the townspeople to keep praying hard to the temple promising that it will always protect its loyal followers. Although the crowd cheers for the knights and the temple, they break up with some tension still in the air because the memory of the raid is heavy on their minds. Later that day, Ephraya finds herself in a library, deeply focused on a scroll. She thinks about the success of her sermon. The townspeople, as gullible as ever, will surely pray more fervently and give more tributes to the temple. However, at the same time, Tian is chained to a wall, clearly hurt from torture. He calls out Ephraya's name, and she sees his surprising strength, wondering if his resilience is why the temple has had trouble getting rid of goblins from the continent. As she gets closer, her curiosity grows about how poison affects goblins. Yet, Tian, filled with anger, accuses her of lying, saying she has tricked him, tricked everyone and even killed Kelia. He asks whether this is what justice looks like to her holy order and if this is her idea of fairness. Ephraya, dismissively, shoves a stick into his mouth, ignoring his accusations while remarking on the boldness of a weak and worthless creature like him questioning human justice. She claims that Kelia, who once stood up for him, was cursed and ultimately betrayed humanity and the holy order. Therefore, her death marks her final loyalty. Ephraya claims that goblins are just pests on the continent, saying that interacting with him is a big privilege. She insists that he should be grateful and allow his body to be used for both human and holy order experiments. While using her magic on him, Tian thinks about his fate. He realizes that ever since he was brought to the human village, Loder and Ephraya have tortured and taken advantage of him in every possible way, never listening to a single word he said. He swears that if he gets another chance, he will never trust humans again. However, he promises to take revenge on them, vowing to crush their bones and drain their blood. 
Jan finds himself in a strange place, looking around with confusion. A board suddenly appears in front of him, stating that he is dead because of his own mistakes. It explains his error, he forgot he was a goblin and humans will usually have neither trust nor pity for goblins. The board reveals that he died after going through terrible torture and pain and that suffering is now forever part of his soul. Then, the board asks if he wants to start a new life. Tian realizes that this board is his own system, which only works after death. It gives him a chance to come back to life. However, this opportunity comes with a catch. He would be reborn as a goblin, a creature seen as the lowest of all beings. He asks what happens if he chooses yes or no. The system explains that if he picks no, his soul will completely disappear, leading to his total non-existence. On the other hand, if he chooses yes, he will keep his memories and the system, and he will be sent back to the goblin cave a week before he died. Captivated by the idea of revenge, Tian confidently picks yes. He is then quickly taken back to the goblin cave, where the system notes that, to help him survive, he has received a small upgrade. When Tian enters the cave, the system immediately alerts him that, although he has been reborn, the danger is still close. The human holy order is getting closer. If he dies again, the system won't be able to bring him back. He seeks advice and the system explains that it works as the goblin life simulation system, which allows him to simulate his life in order to predict future events. Every choice he makes leads to different results and each simulation lasts for 24 hours. After that time, he gets points that can be traded for items. Tian tells the system to start the simulation, which shows his current problem, getting out of the goblin cave. He has three choices, warn the other goblins and team up to fight Loder and his men, which gives him ten points, leave the other goblins behind and escape alone, earning five points, or hide in the cave, hoping that Loder and his men won't find him, which gets him zero points, Tian decides that teaming up with the goblins might not be enough to beat Loder. However, he chooses the first option, thinking that the highest point reward could help him get a weapon and maybe surprise them. The system then shows that Tian led the goblins into a dangerous fight against Holy Knight Loder, which ended in their defeat. It suggests he should think more carefully about his strengths before making choices. However, Tian still gets the 10 points. This feedback is important because it emphasizes the need for strategic thinking, although the result was not good. Tian requests that the system open the exchange shop. However, he finds out that he doesn't have enough points to buy most of the weapons. He sees a dagger that costs 10 points and decides to purchase it. This choice gives him a small boost in both strength and speed. Next, he asks about Kelia and discovers that, because of changes in the timeline from his rebirth, Kelia was never captured by the goblins and is now living happily in the village. Tian feels relieved to know he has kept his promise to her. Thus, he focuses on escaping and surviving. He picks the narrowest path, thinking that the guards at the smaller entrance outside will be less dangerous. Outside, he hears two guards talking about their dislike for goblins. One guard says that anyone who tries to escape through the small entrance will be crushed by his hammer. The other guard adds that Loder told them to kill any girl who tries to run away during the chaos. Tian, furious about this, decides to face the guards. He changes his voice to sound like a woman's and calls for help, planning to trick the guards. They hear the plea and mistakenly think it is a girl, prompting them to tell her to come out. Tian stays hidden as one guard moves closer to the cave, hiding a knife behind his back. Although the guard gets nearer to Tian's spot, Tian gets ready to attack. However, the tension in the air is strong, and this moment could decide the outcome of their meeting. Because of this, every second feels stretched, but Tian holds his breath, waiting for the right moment. Tian thrusts his dagger into the guard as he approaches. However, the second guard, who still doesn't notice what just happened, thinks about why his buddy is taking so long. Without hesitating, Tian quickly drags the lifeless body of the first guard aside and lunges at the second, sending him sprawling to the ground. The fallen guard, shocked by the sight of a goblin who can actually talk like a human, pleads for his life. He shows Tian a photograph of his family and speaks earnestly about his daughter, saying that they are waiting for him to come back. 
he insists that he is just following orders from the Holy Order and argues that he had no choice. Although Tian thinks about what the guard is saying, the guard tries to bribe him with a pouch of gold, promising to deliver a young human girl to him. However, the guard is secretly getting ready to stab Tian with a hidden knife. Anticipating this trick, Tian quickly takes him out. After dealing with the guards, Tian hears Loder's voice in the distance. He puts on one of the guard's cloaks and leaves the scene, determined to confront Loder and Ifraya soon. When they get to the place, Loder wonders if the guards were taken out by goblins that escaped, while Ifraya thinks that a goblin who can kill guards must be a mutant. Loder, feeling pretty annoyed, kicks one of the dead guards which is a pointless thing to do and scolds them for not getting rid of the goblin. Ifraya, with a creepy grin, says that catching a mutant goblin would be a fascinating challenge. However, this situation is really risky because the stakes are so high. Although Loder is frustrated, he can't ignore how tempting such a chase is. But he knows that winning is far from certain. As night falls, Tian feels a deep sense of relief. While he rests, he is grateful that he has survived. He is determined to face the humans in a way that fits his goblin nature. His plan involves using goblin traits, like upgrading through mating and devouring, to boost his strength. His main goal is to enhance his abilities and create more powerful offspring, thus expanding his influence. Although he thinks about Loder and Ephraia, he swears to make every man long for death and every woman suffer under his rule. However, this doesn't come without challenges. When Tian hears a noise in the forest, he thinks that Loder and his group might still be chasing him. He gets ready to attack first. However, he soon discovers that the sound comes from another goblin. To his surprise, this goblin is female and can actually talk, which is strange because goblins are usually male. The female goblin begs him not to hurt her, saying that she just needs to get some water. Tian, shocked, looks at her stats and realizes that if a male goblin mates with a female, he can become a legendary goblin god. Staring at her in disbelief, Tian listens closely as she tells him that the chief sent her to collect water, and if she fails, she will be punished severely. She starts to cry and Tian quickly comforts her, not wanting her tears to attract the attention of Loder and his group. The female goblin is surprised that Tian can talk, finding his kindness unusual. Although other goblins have been so mean to her, she tells him that it's the first time someone has cared for her like this. However, she offers to take him to her tribe if he has no other place to go. Tian feels relief when he finds a goblin tribe nearby. However, he is still unsure if Loder and his group are still chasing him. This makes him think that finding a safe place is his top priority right now. As he and the female goblin get closer to the tribe, he remembers his original plan, to come up with a way to gather followers. When they arrive, the goblins show up with their stone spears and question why Tian is wearing human clothes. They make fun of the female goblin, calling her a freak and blaming her for Tian's presence. Tian steps up confidently, asking to see their chief. The goblins laugh, saying that an outsider can't just demand to meet their chief whenever they want. Because of this, they decide to capture Tian and take him to the chief. At that moment, the female goblin speaks up, pleading with them not to hurt Tian. Just then, the goblin chief appears and asks why everyone is gathered. Tian looks at the chief's stats, and he is shocked to see that the chief is a goblin of very high level. Although he feels a bit nervous, he knows he must stay strong, 